the great big controversy has begun. Since posting those last few videos about the burning bush and the lavender, people have been asking me, Mike, why are you using sand? And not only are they asking that, they're asking, what kind of a ratio of soil and sand did you mix together? And what did you put in that sand? So in this video, we're gonna answer some questions I've been getting, and that is, why did I use sand in the last few projects? And am I giving up on fine fir bark forever? Let's find out. So before we go any further though, we gotta do a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, my kids forced me to make French toast this morning, so if you see my eyes glaze over a little bit, it's all the sugar coursing through my veins. It sure was good though. Do we need to make a French toast video? What do you guys think? Do you want to see more cooking videos through the winter? I made that last video about the peach cobbler because you guys asked for it and some of you saw it, some of you didn't, and that leads me to the next thing. But uh, if you didn't see it, go click in the link down below and check out the peach cobbler. It's a great recipe. The other thing is I'm getting people asking me all the time now lately, Mike, I hit the bell notification a long time ago and I'm not getting any notifications of your videos. Well, YouTube just recently, a few weeks ago, changed something in their system to where they're not sending out notification emails anymore. I think I, I read an article about it and they said they did this because they didn't see that it was making sense and it wasn't really doing too much good. People weren't getting their notifications from emails and so they got rid of that. Well, there must have been a lot more people getting their notifications from emails than they thought or we wouldn't be getting all these questions. So that one's out of my control, but all I can say for now is just check in on the channel from time to time. I'm going to be here. I've got lots of cool videos coming down the pike, so check it out. See what's going on every once in a while. That's all I can tell you for now. Hopefully they'll bring that back or they'll come up with a better way to notify you guys when videos are out. In the meantime, I've just been trying to put my mug in the thumbnail so you guys see it when the video comes out. All right, so let's get back to sand. So people want to know why I've been using sand. I made a burning bush video this summer about sand, using sand to propagate. I made a lavender video using sand to propagate. I've got another video that's cooking right now that's using sand to propagate. And people are wondering why I'm using sand. And not only that, they saw that sand and it was just a deep, dark, rich color, and they want to know what I'm mixing into that sand. Well, I'm going to go get that sand to you right now. We're going to take a look at it and see what it looks like, what it is, why I'm using it, where you can get it as well, and what won't work. So here it is, guys and gals. There's the sand I used. I went down to the Rose Propagation Store, and they sold me this Rose Propagation Sand. You can see it says, all-purpose rose sand. Well, maybe not really, but... Uh, Let's take a look at it. So it's just, all this is, is an old tube to add weight to the back of a pickup truck when it's snowing or there's icy roads. And I've had this for years sitting here. I wanted to make the sand videos for you for the purpose of using sand to teach you some things. And this was all the sand I had on hand. I dug into here. It's not the ideal sand, but it absolutely worked as you saw in those videos. And I'll put links to them down in the description. But that's what it looks like. It looks dark when it's wet, and that's why you guys see, you know, when I when I get this uh, in the pot and I water it, it looks like there might be some soil or something really beautiful mixed in, but all this is is just sand. And you know what? It's not even the coarsest sand, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Now, when it came to the lavender and the burning bush cuttings that we did in these little pots here, isn't that beautiful? That sand, when it's wet, it looks like I've got something mixed in. But there's nothing mixed into it. It's just that sand out of that tube out there. The whole purpose was just to teach you guys that sand is a really effective medium for rooting. The reason I wanted to do that was because I get asked all the time what type of medium I use, or they see that bark and they say, what is that again? Or they can't get access to it because they live in a part of the country that just, it's not a resource where they live. So my answer to that problem is sand. Sand can be found in just about any place in the world if you can't find the fine fir bark. Um, some people use cocoa coir, you know, but it, that's not everywhere in the world. You would have to spend a lot of money getting it in bales. It's shipped all over the place. But sand is everywhere. The world is made up of 70% oceans and oceans and sand go hand in hand. I'm not a poet. I guess I am now. So sand is plentiful, and when I first started propagating, I started out using sand as well. I would drive down to the local landscape supply business with my old pickup truck and load it up with about a half a yard of sand. And that stuff is heavy, 
It is backbreaking work to move it around. It's time consuming. I was filling up big frames with sand. I wasn't just filling little pots. I was filling an entire propagation frame. And what I found at one point was that the sand drains really well and the plants root in it well because it's inert, it doesn't have any, it's not alive, it doesn't have any bacteria and fungi in it, it drains water right through, plenty of aeration goes through after the water passes through, and it just makes for an excellent medium. But with the rhododendrons that have the fine hair-like roots, when I would go to pot them up, those, the sand would just fall out of the roots and then the roots would be bare and exposed and they're fine and fragile. And so they didn't do as well when I would transplant them into pots. And that's when I discovered the finely ground fir bark. It's a plentiful resource in my area and that's why I use that now. No, I'm not getting rid of the bark. The only reason I made these videos with the sand this year is because I wanted to show you guys that sand works. We're gonna talk about what kind of sand but sand works and it works really well and you can get it anywhere in the world. I'd be hard pressed to think of a place that didn't have sand somewhere close by on a beach in a big box store somewhere for sale, a landscape supply business, unless you lived in Antarctica. Now, what type of sand do you want to use? Well, that's the big controversy because everybody hears you've got to use coarse sand. It has to be coarse sand or it has to be sharp sand because you want the water to drain down straight through really fast. Well, I'm here to tell you that I've used all kinds of sand. I've used builder sand. I've used sand that at playground sand that I bought at big box stores. I've used that sand out of that bag there that went in the back of my pickup truck. And that stuff, it's got a lot of dirt in it. It's got, a, not dirt, but it's got a lot of really fine particles in it that actually you can see the muddy water washing through as I rinse it out. And so it's not the coarsest sand. The key is it's got to drain well. It doesn't necessarily have to be the most coarse sand, but it's got to drain well. And so when I, this stuff is borderline. When I put it in a pot and I put water on it, the water will build up in that pot a half inch, three quarters of an inch, but it drains within four or five seconds. That's not a problem. That water sitting in there for four or five seconds and then draining through is not a problem. Those plants can stand a little bit of water for a few seconds as it's draining through because then the air is going to follow right down as that water passes through and it's going to aerate around those roots or around those stems. But the sand is still going to retain a little bit of moisture in there. But it won't be wet because it drains right through. What you don't want to use is like a pool filter sand or sometimes aquarium sand, get, you know, you can get it really fine. You don't want to use too fine of a sand because that stuff will hold water for too long. It'll just sit in the pot and take forever to drain. And you don't want your cuttings to be waterlogged or sitting in water. So that would be just about the only sand you wouldn't use is like I said, a pool filter sand or an aquarium sand or something that doesn't drain well. Other than that, you're free, guys. Go find some sand. Like I said, I've bought it at big box stores, the playground sand. You can go down to your local river, if it's legal in your area, and just dig up a five gallon bucket of sand. Sand is a wonderful thing to use for propagation for plants that aren't like rhododendrons. It will root the rhododendrons, but then it's tough when you're potting them up. But it's wonderful for propagation because it's inert, it doesn't, it's not alive, so it doesn't have bacteria and fungus within it that will mold and rot cuttings. It drains really well, and it still retains a little bit of moisture around all the little sand grains so that those stems have some moisture for the roots to root out into. And like I said, I started with sand. It's a great material to work with. It's just heavy, and if you're gonna do large frames or huge areas, it's a lot of work moving that stuff around. In a way though, it can be better than the bark because the bark with some plants can hold on to too much moisture. So don't get hung up on the propagation medium. Make sure it's draining well, it holds on to a little moisture, and it's inert. That's all you really need. So I hope that solves our big controversy when it comes to what kind of sand did Mike use in his pots and why is he using sand? I hope you guys learned something from this today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more fantastic gardening videos. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.